Hello again, people. We are back this week with some new large acreage property up in northwest Nevada, just outside the town of Winnemucca. This one's ideal for ranching, ideal for agriculture, ideal really for anyone looking to build a nice remote home site for themselves against the backdrop of some majestic mountains and beautiful blue sky. Best of all, guys, is that this one can be used for both residential or commercial purposes, meaning it's a lot more versatile and offers its owner a lot more options for how it is eventually developed. This one's 41 acres, priced at 28000 Learn all about it and more after the intro. So the property we're going to be discussing today is located up here in the northwest part of the state in Humboldt County. Of course, Humboldt is both very large as well as a very rural county with a lot of what we will call open range land within its borders. Now, it should be noted that this is a part of the state which, despite its rural nature, actually has a lot to see and do. Uh, living out here will put you within only two and a half hour drive of the Reno-Tahoe metro area, where, of course, you'll have easy access to countless casinos, resorts, shows, dining, shopping, nightlife, not to mention some of the best skiing in the nation. And, of course, between Reno-Tahoe and Humboldt County, you've got a number of great lakes to boat, fish, and relax in, including Washoe Lake, Pyramid Lake, Lake Lahontan, and the Rye Patch State Park and Reservoir, located here in nearby Pershing County. And it is also worth noting that Humboldt County, or more specifically the Black Rock Desert region up here, is home to the annual Burning Man Festival. Now, of course, this may not be everyone's jam, but if you enjoy doing peyote in the desert for a week with thousands and thousands of strangers, this may be the place for you to buy some land. Finally, people, it is worth noting that despite the fact I've used the word rural about a half dozen times so far, Humboldt County is home to the town of Winnemucca, the county seat and population center of the county, and home to roughly 8,000 Nevadans. Of course, in a town with a population this large, it means you'll have easy access to groceries and supplies, including the ubiquitous Walmart and Ace Hardware, both of which should come in handy should you decide to develop the property, as well as medical facilities, casinos, restaurants, schools, and churches, all of which should come in handy should you decide to raise a family. So with all that said, people, the subject property is located up here in the northeast part of the county, actually pretty close to the Elko County line, about 30 minutes outside of Winnemucca. In fact, it bears noting that it's also about 30 minutes outside of Battle Mountain, down here in nearby Lander County, so you're about equidistant to the two towns, which perhaps opens you up to a few more options as far as convenience and supply stores. Whatever the case, you are also about 20 minutes north of Golconda and this quaint establishment in this little region right here off of Midas Road. Now, first thing I want to point out to you guys is what the road conditions are like out here. And if we go to the photos, you'll see that the route you're taking out to the property are all state roads, the 789 and then the 18, which from how I read it turns into Midas Road. I may be wrong about that, but basically... Point being, you've got a mostly paved road journey out to the land with the last few miles being this well-maintained dirt gravel. Now, that said, as you can see here, this is roughly where the property is located in relation to Midas Road. So to go the couple hundred yards from point A to point B, you are going to have to cross over some of the neighboring parcels. Now, I want to talk about this in a moment because this tends to cause a lot of confusion. If we go to the plat map here, you'll see that this property, as well as all the properties in the region, have legal access, as you can see by the dotted lines along the perimeter of each parcel on the plat map. Realistically speaking, however, these legal easements have not been well marked or well maintained. And what you'll find in regions like this is that trails and paths get carved over time from local yokels on dirt bikes who cross over other people's land simply because no one's there to tell them not to. And if we're being honest, since none of these neighboring lots have been developed or fenced, that means you'll be afforded the same freedom. All that said, if you are looking to buy a property like this and develop it seriously, you'll likely want a surveyor to come out and not only mark the corners, but also kind of help you in discovering where exactly those legal easements are and how best to get to your land without crossing over the neighbor's lot. Because it may be undeveloped today, but who knows who's going to buy it tomorrow, right? Now, of course, that's kind of a pain, that's kind of an expense, but it is something that this property has in common with pretty much all properties in regions like this. Next, I want to point out that here along Midas Road, you're going to find two things of note. The first are power lines, which you can only kind of vaguely make out in some of these photos. Ordinarily, I would assume these are more of the industrial variety and not residential, but also located along Midas Road, and this we actually have a better picture of, are underground utilities, telecom lines, etc., now, obviously, being as removed as this property is, it's still probably better and more affordable to investigate a solar alternative when it comes to bringing power to the land. But if you are so inclined to look into getting connected to the grid, you can contact Nevada Energy, 
the power company that services this region. And based on the presence of the telecom lines and the fiber optic cable, it suggests to me that it may be a scoot easier to get power out to the land than you might think. Next, as we go through the photo gallery here, do want to point out that all the land that comprises these 41 acres is largely flat land covered in sagebrush. In other words, easy to park on, easy to build on. And of course, you're surrounded by numerous mountains out here, Adam Peak, Kelly Creek Mountain, Six Mile Hill, all the biggies. So a really picturesque backdrop to the region and a lot of beautiful wide open space you can wake up to every day. Now, two quick things before we move on. First, do want to point out the neighbors here. This property is in a region described as open range country, which means you're going to have some moo cows and perhaps even some wild horses roaming around out here. So if you do buy the property and you want to keep them off it, the responsibility will fall to you to fence the land off. That's the first thing. The second thing is as we look at the drone photos here, normally we like to give you guys some outlines of the property to get a sense of the footprint and exactly where the property starts and ends. When you get into parcels that are this large, however, it's a little difficult to do while still keeping the drone within the Earth's gravitational pull. Point being, we don't have that this time, but between the photos and the footage you see here, we'd like to believe it gives you a good enough sense of the property and its surroundings. Of course, if not, you're always welcome to take a drive out and inspect the land at your leisure. So as we enter a discussion now about zoning, I will say that when you have land like this, this removed from population centers, this rural and with this degree of privacy, obviously it's not for everybody. But the people who are attracted to this tend to fall into a specific category of buyer we will term rugged individualists. And of course, if you are one of those people, it means you probably want as much land as possible with as few rules as possible. Which is why you'll be glad to know that if you come up here to the top of the page, you will see that as we have written, this region has, let's throw it up on the screen, no HOA, no annual dues, no time limits on building, no covenants, and no restrictions. And of course, all this equates to property owners being able to develop the land with greater freedom and independence than they will find elsewhere. Additionally, it should be noted that while Humboldt County does have formal zoning, this property falls under the designation of M3 or Open Land Use District, which, from everything I'm reading, tends to be more permissive than what you might find elsewhere, even within Humboldt County itself. And if you come down here and click this link, you will be taken to an excerpt from the Humboldt County Zoning Ordinance, which actually bothers to go into some detail on the topic. For instance, people, it enumerates the fact that single-family residences in whatever form that may take, including mobile and modular homes, are acceptable in this region. That one, of course, is kind of obvious. That describes most land everywhere and will probably also include any sort of shipping container, A-frame, barn dominium, or other such structure as long as they're built up to code. Additionally, however, the M3 designation allows for agricultural and livestock activities. So, of course, a farm, a ranch, anything like that will also be acceptable out here. And it also allows for some interesting conditional use permits, including gun clubs, dude ranches, golf courses and driving ranges, home occupations, and some commercial uses. Now, of course, some commercial uses, quote-unquote, is a little broad. Does it mean auto repair and mechanics? Does it mean a small airfield? Who really knows? My guess, however, is that it's broad for a reason probably because they're likely to okay a lot of different things. So of course, as always, we encourage anyone seriously looking to develop the property, to talk to the county first about their specific plans and whatever additional permits you may need. The long and the short of it, however, is that this is land in a region which differentiates itself from others we typically see, where you've got a lot more options beyond mere residential development. So really ideal for anyone looking for property they can both live and work on. With all that said, if you would like to purchase this property, you'll be glad to know that we closed on it and received title insurance through Cow County Title, which means that we will be conveying it to you with clear and marketable title. So all you have to do is come up here to the top of the page, click the Buy Now button, which will take you to this secure checkout, where we ask for a non-refundable, people, let me say it again, non-refundable $500 earnest money deposit. Now, to be clear, guys, this is not a property that has any financing offered. This is not a property where we're doing monthly payments. This is a property where we expect you to have the entire cash price. So if you do not have the entire cash price, you should not initiate this transaction. For those of you who do, however, here's the way it works. Come down here, give us the name for the deed, name for the contract, your mailing address. Then at the bottom of the page, agree to the terms of service, click next, and on the very next page, you can enter credit or debit card information to place the $500 deposit. Now, to be clear, guys, this is an expensive property. Really, anything north of $10,000, we encourage our buyers to close through a title company on. Of course, you don't have to do that. Nobody's got a gun to your head. It's up to you. But when you're spending this kind of money, we recommend getting title insurance.
And of course, one of the major benefits here for you, the buyer, is that with a title company, you've got a third party intermediary who is not only handling the conveyance of the property, but also the disbursement of funds, meaning we cannot touch your money until such a time as the property has been deeded into your name. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how that whole process works, you'll be glad to know that on the listing page, we've got this helpful notes about purchasing, which goes into a little more detail here, but more helpfully, it links you to some pages on the website, which will go into even greater detail about this process. The first page is called How It Works Buying From Us. And if you go here, you can see exactly how this process plays out. Step one, you place that deposit. Step two, we're gonna draft a contract. You sign it, we sign it. And step three, the title company will do the rest, albeit slowly and over the period of about a month. And in case you're at all skeptical about placing money before seeing the contract you'll be asked to sign, you'll be glad to know we have a copy of our standard sale purchase agreement right here. You can click that and read through a generic version of what that contract looks like. It's a pretty easy contract, one page, one page for signatures. If you got a lawyer in the family, have them give it a look-see, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Additionally, guys, if you haven't been through the title escrow process before, you're probably going to have a lot of questions about it. You'll be glad to know we have a page on our website entitled Title Escrow Frequently Asked Questions page. So if you click on that, it'll take you to this page where pretty much every conceivable question we have ever gotten from a buyer or will ever get from a buyer is answered here. Questions about benefits, questions about potential drawbacks, timeline, schedule, logistics, so on and so forth. So we encourage you, give that a read. So in conclusion, people, for anyone looking for land in northern Nevada, I think this is a property really worth checking out. Of course, it's always nice when you can find larger chunks of land like this, zoned with a certain versatility, which affords you not only the ability to develop the property however you like, but also gives you the option to use it residentially or commercially. And of course, we've gone the whole video without even talking about it, but with a price as low as $28,000 for 41 acres, you're spending less than $700 an acre in a region of the state where you don't usually find land priced that low on a per acre basis. I really like this one, and I hope you guys do too. Thanks as always for watching, everybody, and we will see you in the next video.